Our next speaker is Dr. Paridhi Todi. She is speaking on outcomes of canalicular laceration repair using intravenous cannula study of an economic approach. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, all. I am Dr. Paridhi, here to present on the study of outcomes of using an IV cannula to repair canalicular laceration. Canalicular system is affected in 16% of eyelid injuries following trauma, 50% of which also involve the canaliculi because of their exposed vulnerable positions in the lid. Repair of all these should be instituted because this may very well be the only working canaliculus of the patient. The aim is to provide endocanalicular support while uh, repairing the laceration, which has been described as both mono and bicanalicular stents of silicon in the literature, but these are often prohibited uh, due to their cost and immediate availability. So we came up with an alternative of using a 24 gauge IV canalicular uh, cannula as an alternative to cater to those patients who could not undergo a silicon stenting. Patients who presented with the lid laceration involving either canaliculi were included. However, those with injury to the sac or the nasolacrimal duct were excluded and referred to an, ocular, uh, an, ophth an oculoplastic surgeon for expert management as well as their confounding effect on our study. So after primary treatment and tetanus toxoid injection in the OT, would, would the wound was debrided, hemostasis was attained and the use of adrenaline for this also blanched the mucosa and aided in identification of the cut ends of the canaliculus. If they were not seen, they were uh, identified using a Bowman's probe, after which similar to the action of a Bowman uh, probing, the, canaliculus, uh, the cannula was inserted and bridging the gap, it was flushed with normal saline to confirm its position in the lacrimal sac. We aimed at uh, retaining the hub throughout the procedure if the patient had good, good Bell's phenomenon to prote protect the cornea as this would enable intraoperative maneuvering and recanulation in case the cannula came out after which it was cut and anchored to the skin. Pericanalicular suturing is important in these cases to ensure that the healing occurs. Extubation was planned at two months based on experience with silicon stents. Anatomical success was defined as uh, continuity of the canaliculus up to the sac by probing and getting a hard stop and functional as absence of epiphora at end of the three month follow up period. So during this four months study, one month was for recruitment and we recruited 10 patients. All of them had a single canaliculus of the lower lid of only one eye involved ranging from 13 years to 65 years. The most common cause was road traffic accident followed by direct injury by a metal or a wooden rod and fist assault. And one elderly gentleman also presented uh, following fall from stairs. The majority were males with a slight right eye preponderance and no globe ruptures were seen. Most of our patients presented by 18 hours with as early as two hours and as late as 48 hours. Extubation as planned was only done in 3% cases and 70% were prematurely extruded. Anatomical success was seen in all cases but functional only in 60% who had no epiphora. Watering was the most common complaint and in 3% three person, uh, this resolved one week postoperatively to asymptomatic levels with topical lubricants and persisted in the other four. Foreign body sensation was also as common. Cosmetic embarrassment was seen, especially in the younger patients, one of whom was a schoolgirl who insisted on extubation within two weeks. Itching around the tube was also seen, and an interesting finding was the dilated punctum seen here in the photo, seen in two patients who were uh, kept, in whom the tube was kept in situ for more than uh, 28 days. So this is pervasive among males and we hypothesize their frequent involvement in road traffic accidents and physical fights. The main age of presentation continues to show a younger uh, adult population and the cause of injury had no outcome uh, effect. All the patients from our study presented early and since there was no delay in procurement of a silicon tube, they also gave good outcomes because the, institu because the repair was instituted early. 
the the dilated lacrimal puncta were uh, we hypothesize caused due to the prolonged placement of the horizontal tube of a relatively inflexible tube functional failure in the 40% patients with anatomical continuity was due to loss of pump function and higher extrusion was seen uh, technique we realize has a few shortcomings first because of the smaller po patient population we could not find any with upper canalicular tears so this may cause some ectropion with the suturing absence of epiphora may also be due to the patent upper uh, canaliculus which is a confounding factor in our study and this will further be evaluated by lacrimal scintigraphy uh, for functional failures and patent upper canaliculus in the following days uh, so to conclude a uh, closely fitting cannula can give good anatomical and acceptable functional outcomes and this is especially relevant in those patients who cannot otherwise afford a silicon tube and some attempt to prevent cicatrical closure gives good outcomes along with standard surgical practices these are the references these are the studies i have referred to thank you okay thank you for your good presentation excellent presentation how will you confirm the other end of the uh, this canaliculus because the end from the puncta that can be easily visible but other end sometimes is very difficult to find out the so we used three techniques first was using adrenaline to blanch the mucosa for those sometimes the canaliculus was protruding from the uh, from the uh, proximal end so it was easy to identify after blanching the mucosa and uh, visualization under the microscope helped also with bowman's probe we could uh, dilate some and after intubation with the canaliculus and flushing we could assess that it is inside the lacrimal sac so sometimes after flushing we saw that it was not going up to the oropharynx so after which and after some more uh, exploration we found the ring shaped structure in some patients of the cut end and that was intubated and after two or three tries so when the uh, flushed nasal saline was uh, normal saline was reaching the uh, nose so we then proceeded to uh, join those ends what's the mean follow up so the mean so we uh, followed nine patients till 3 months post operatively one uh, dropped out after 2 months so uh, a very nice presentation i had done uh, two cases of uh, this when i was a resident and the only problem i ever faced with these iv cannulas while passing through the canaliculus was early extrusion because you know yes, one end keeps hanging and it doesn't sit snug against the punctum is there any way or did you use some method to secure the iv cannula so that it doesn't slip out or go in causing yes, a granuloma and uh, if not then did you experience early extrusion i must have missed that point where you had so so early extrusion was seen in 70% cases okay. and two methods was uh, initially we kept longer ends which caused more extrusion because the patient kept touching it or it caused more foreign body sensations and irritations so we shortened the end and there was a suture passed through the canaliculus to the subciliary uh, skin to fix it so in every case that was done so that was done from the beginning okay in all the cases yes in all 10 cases 